Hello and welcome to Newsflix show mapping fault lines where we discuss major geopolitical issues across the world. The issue we are going to be talking about today is far closer to home. A few days ago there was news reports that a US missile ship the USS John Paul Jones entered into what is India's exclusive economic zone, a region which is defined as 200 nautical miles from the coastline. Now, there's been a lot of controversy over why it happened. There are a lot of multiple definitions of what is international waters, what was the message that the this operation by this movement by the ship was planning to was intended to make and we have with us prabir purkai sir to talk about this prabir sir to begin with uh, uh, there is a lot of technicality and jargon like i talked about but it does seem clear of course that the us the uss john paul jones did enter into india's exclusive economic zone so we'll talk about the implications later but how how are the, how are these concepts defined in the do both india and the us agree or a common definition on some of these well you know the fundamental problems that we problem that we had is this comes from what is international law and with respect to freedom of navigation and the united states claims that they have an understanding of inter- international law and freedom of navigation which apply to its warships irrespective of what other countries may think the question is is there an international law they are referring to now the only international law that exists as of date is what is called the united nations convention on the law of seas and that was agreed to by countries in 1982 that is the reference law for this purpose and the united states is not a signatory to that law so what it is asserting is a definition of its own making of what it considers freedom of navigation it has actually a map of the world in which says what they don't agree with and they will do freedom of navigation ops operations based on their understanding of international law which applies to the sea high seas and territorial waters as well as the ex- exclusive economic zone so that is one part of the problem that the us definition is a definition which is only applicable to the united states and it doesn't uh, agree with anything else any other country is willing to accept now so this is one big issue that do we have a international law that applies to united states as well and the answer is no and as we know this has been a repeated problem not only on this particular issue but a whole range of other the other issues where the us says that its laws apply to every everywhere else every country has to adhere to international law and to us understanding of international law even if it is not stated in international law and this is not justiciable in international courts or tribunals or whatever that might have been set up because us quite often is not a, a party to this international treaties and laws so this is the key issue when it comes to what us calls the freedom of navigation and what its international understanding of international law is now the problem that india has is that it has been implicitly and explicitly supporting the united states on south china sea now you know if you come to the south china sea this is not about uh, high seas as the us is, pre- is pretending it is it's really about not even territorial waters of the of china which is a, again which has a definite boundary but it's really about claims about e- exclusive economic zones what you talked about the luxuryp economic zone which the united states does not recognize and has uh, claimed its right of uh, freedom of navigation now this e- exclusive economic zone is not open seas not high seas where you have a freedom of navigation it's not territorial waters but if you look at freedom of navigation under the unclos then most south asian countries south and southeast asian countries will not be on the us side of its interpretation on unclos uh, what is freedom of navigation now the word even the freedom of navigation the us is using itself is a problematic one because in territorial waters and in what would be called exclusive economic zones it has a right of navigation but not a freedom of navigation and right of navigation is circumscribed by a certain set of things in the unclos and one of it is that innocent passage and so on so it is not an untrammeled right you don't have a completely uncontested 
complete right as you have in what would be called high seas, where you have a freedom of navigation. In this place, you have a right of navigation and it is linked to innocent passage. And you can do a certain set of things, you can't do a certain set of things. So this, this is always has been the issue between the United States and all other countries, in fact. And it really boils down to US not recognizing UNCLOS because that is where the exclusive economic zone concept was worked out and agreed to. And therefore, what it is saying is beyond territorial waters, everything is high seas. This was the US position in the UNCLOS negotiations. And that's one of the reasons it has not signed. Now it does this 20 to 30, what is called of, call it called spawn offs every year. And uh, last year it didn't do this in India, in Indian waters. This time it has, okay? So it's making it very clear. You might sign on to the dotted line on Quad, agree with us on various things. But as for our position goes, it's our way on the highway. You don't have any option. So that is the that is the position. You may endorse the United States position of foreign ops in South China Sea. But having done that, then you are also caught by the fact that they then exercise the right to do foreign ops in your waters. And then what do you do? So I think this is the short sightedness of the government of India. They really didn't think through the positions that if this is the position that we are taking on South China Sea. How will it affect us when it comes to Andamans, when it comes to Nicobar Islands, when it comes to Lakshadweep, and even our economic, exclusive economic zone uh, around the coast of India. So I think this is the huge problem that we have created for ourselves and therefore our embarrassment. Absolutely, Prabir. In this context, of course, there have been uh, reports, there's been discussions that the foreign ops was actually meant to send a message to China that the fact, like you said, that the US does not really buy into these international conventions. But India has really, in some senses, landed up with an egg on its face a bit because uh, we just had the Quad discussions. There was a lot of buzz about the Quad as well. It's been going on for quite some time. And we recently had deals uh, which uh, talked about greater military cooperation between India and the United States as well. So right now, uh, the position India is in is a bit untenable. But as far as the United States and China goes, how does this sort of play into the uh, issues regarding the South China Sea as well? You know, South China Sea is clearly not an issue of international waters. As I said, South China Sea is essentially what needs to be resolved in UNCLOS, but unfortunately, the parties to the UNCLOS, uh, the way they have raised the issue, the way China has reacted meant that this has actually been an ex parte verdict given against China, which China has not accepted. So the question is that what it was say four years, five years back, that a lot of these countries were trying to ride on the American coattails, so to say, and thought that that would give them certain protection on the South China Sea issue. Now that hasn't worked out and it is clear that China and US may clash on the South China Sea issue, but it is not going to benefit the other players in the region. And this can only be done or benefits could come only if all the parties come together. Now, you know, th the problem that we have on all these kinds of issues, and this is not restricted to South China Sea alone, there are issues in between Japan, between Japan and Korea, but there again, the United States does fawn ops. It's not that it doesn't do the fawn ops there too. Uh, South Korea, the whole bunch of countries have these problems because one of the consequences of creating this concept about economic, uh, exclusive economic zones is this was going to uh, lay questions regarding contiguous areas of countries. And if that happens, how do you divide that? Where does the line go? This also becomes even more problematic because earlier, those which are considered shoals or you know patches of uh, land on the uh, on the ocean, which was not even inhabited, but sometimes people came and camped there. Now all of those areas then become very critical for defining where the economic zone is. 
And those areas are in fact the issues which are being discussed between, on the South China side, between the contiguous states, which is actually Philippines, Vietnam, uh, Indonesia, and so on. Now, all of those are intractable if you decide to fight. And if you decide there's a military solution to the problem, they don't get solved. But if you want to, at the end of it, say work on what are the fishing rights, what are the economic rights under the water in terms of drilling for gas, et cetera, then all of this require a cooperative solution. And I think over there, the fact that the United States continuously ups the ante by doing this military uh, ships traveling through South China Sea and saying we are doing it for freedom of navigation actually distracts from the other issue, makes it a defense issue for China as well, that then they need to protect this because this could easily be a springboard to an attack on China itself. It's a coastal security that that becomes the predominant issue for China. So the fact that happened, that is happening and not the discussion of economic zone being the key issue, I think distracts from the whole what, how we should look at it. But the problem is India, instead of understanding that countries in Southeast Asia, countries like India, have to work out how we cooperatively look at the economic zone. That is the key issue that we need to solve among ourselves. Inviting United States, United States naval warships to uh, do fawn ops in this area is counterproductive as we are seeing now. You know, there is one fundamental difference between the United States and all of us. It's we are all essentially land-based countries. We do not look at the sea as something which is our territory. The United States is a maritime power as UK was, England was, a lot of the European countries were. Of course, they became settler, colonial, uh, colonizers. The United States is an outcome of that, as well as Australia and New Zealand. Now, these are maritime powers, and they therefore look at the sea or the oceans as the primary play of power that they have to exercise. They don't look at the fact that it is really the land that is important, where people are. So if you see US, it really wants to project its power in South China Sea, which is 30, 50, 25 kilometers off the coast of China. Of course, also off the coast of Philippines and other countries. So this is the real issue, projection of maritime power right up to the coast of China, just like it also expands its land power using NATO right up to the border of Russia. So I think this is a larger understanding, geostrategic understanding that US has, that the, they have to control Chinese coastline because it can, has to be controlled through the ocean. And therefore the concept of the Indo-Pacific, right. it is not a concept of Asia, you know, that's not the issue. It's a concept of Indo-Pacific, control the ocean, and by that control India and control China. And I think this is where India has to understand that its geostrategic vision cannot be that of a maritime power like the United States, which believes in power projection using its naval power. And that's why the aircraft carriers and so on. And that's a vision we cannot share and we should not share. This is a larger geostrategic perspective that India needs to have. And it's not an India versus China issue. How do you really look yourself, look at yourself as a nation? And I think, as you said, egg on, a, on, on our face is a minor way of putting it. We really have got ourselves in a jam because we have not understood the larger geostrategic ideas that the United States has been in mobilizing the Quad essentially to control the Indian and Pacific oceans. And what the consequences of that are for us are now clear that this means if we accept South China Sea is where US Navy has a right, then accept the Lakshadweep Andamans as well. Absolutely. That's what it really is now being stated. Right. Thank you so much, Prabhu, for talking to us. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching your screen. Thank <laughs> you.